this video, we're gonna talk about my date, Nada Sababa. And I must say that Ethiopia has the most beautifulest women I've seen. They're in my top five of beautiful women. Thank you. Okay, let's get in the topic of dating in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Now, I want to go a little bit back to what I mentioned in the beginning of the video about Ethiopian women being in my personal top five beautifulest women in the world. Now, I'm not going to mention the other four because at some point I want to make a video talking about my top five and why they're in my top five. But for now, I want to concentrate on my date and I'm going to talk a little bit about Ethiopian women in general, but I want to more talk about the date I had and I'll just brushly, just a little bit, talk about Ethiopian women. Now, the person you see in the video, I met her back in December when I was in Brazil on vacation. And I always say, when you're going to a different country, in my opinion, it's best to meet somebody online or on a dating site before you get there. So that once you arrive to that country you're traveling to, your vacation, your trip will be that much easier and stress-free. So I always do that. I've been doing that for years. That's my little thing I do. I don't want to go to a country and don't know where to go, where not to go, uh, what restaurants to go to, where the tours are. I don't want to have to stress about that. I want to know beforehand. So I always do this. Now, like I said, I met her back in December. We've been talking since then up until now. And uh, some things I use to find women are... Of course, the internet, but in specifically, I use Instagram. And if I'm going to Africa, I'm using AfroIntroductions.com. And the second one is called LoveHabibi.com. Now, they're both the same. It's basically a search engine that's very broad or you can narrow it. Now, it's broad meaning that you can find Ethiopian women all across the world, even in your country, if there are any in there, you know. It might be more Ethiopians in certain different places. But that's how broad it can get. And also you can narrow it down to Addis Ababa, Ethiopia only. And that's what I did. And once we met and we talked a little bit, I moved her from the website to Facebook. And now Facebook is another vehicle you can use, but it's kind of tricky. I have to do some type of video or talk about that alone of how to use it to your advantage. But I moved her from the website that we met on to Facebook because most of my friends are on Facebook or Instagram, either or either one they have, you know, I, I moved them to there and we finished the conversation. One reason is because Facebook and Instagram, they're free. So if you're paying for one of the two sites I just named at some point, whether it's monthly, you know, you don't want to keep paying every month because I'm pretty sure you're not going to travel there every month. So once your subscription is over with, then you have to pay again. So to avoid that, I always move them over to another free type of social media site, which is Facebook or Instagram. And we continue our conversation there until I arrive there. Now, what I like about Ethiopian women compared to speaking for myself, I've been to a lot of different countries. But I'm just going to name a few. Brazil, Colombia, Cape Verde, uh, even in Asia, even in Thailand and Singapore. Ethiopian women come out on top as in they do not flake, meaning that there's no in between with Ethiopian women. I love that. There's no, uh, I don't know, or maybe either, either they like you or they don't like you. Either it's yes or it's no. So I never got flaked on in Ethiopia. And this is my second time coming to Ethiopia. You know, uh, the person I met, you know, I told her I'm going to arrive at five, but let's meet at seven. So that will give me time to freshen up, put away my stuff, maybe take, you know, a little nap 
or whatever before we meet. And she was like, you know, it's fine. It's okay. So I gave her my hotel name, the address, and she said, okay, I'll be there at 7. And guess what happened? At 7 o'clock, she messaged me on Facebook saying, I'm downstairs, you know, come out. And guess what happened? When I came out, she was there. You know, unlike some places I visited, like, for example, like in Brazil, you know, it's like a hit or miss. You know, I don't have that much flakiness there, but I've had it there in Brazil, you know. It gets to the point where we're going to meet and guess what? Something happens, you know. She either backs out or just another day and let's meet tomorrow. In Ethiopia, it it never happened. Like I mentioned, again, this is my second time and I never got flaked on in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. So that's a plus. And also you get like the perception that Ethiopian women only date Ethiopian men. And that is a myth. That's not true. Now, it's true and it's false. It's true in the sense that there are not a lot of African-Americans visiting Ethiopia. Therefore, what do you expect for Ethiopian women to date? Of course, their own Ethiopian men. But if you're a foreigner and you do go there, you do have a chance of meeting an Ethiopian woman, you know, and most likely she's going to think that you are Ethiopian only for the fact that there's not a lot of African-Americans visiting Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. And that's another thing. If you're black, period, and you, if you're black, period, and you're visiting Ethiopia, they might talk to you in their language, which is Amaharic, only for the simple fact that there's not a lot of people as in African-Americans visiting the city of Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. You know, that's just how it is. So be prepared for that. But not to say that they don't speak English. There's a lot of people in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia that speak English, but it's not going to be the English that you might hear in the UK. Or it's not going to be the English you might hear in the US. You know, it's going to be their dialect of English because, you know, they have a different accent than Americans or people from the UK, but they do speak English, but not English like you're thinking where you're from. So that's going to be the difference. But if you're black, they will speak to you in Amahart, just assuming that you're from there, you know, so be prepared for that. Um, Something else I can mention. Um, well, Let's go back to my date. So we went to a restaurant and since I asked her out in December, once I come there to Ethiopia, let's go out for dinner. Of course, I paid. I asked for the date. I pay for the date. And it goes vice versa. If a woman asks me out on a date, then she pays. But in this case, I asked her out. Therefore, I paid. And we went to a nice restaurant, as you can see. And the food, Ethiopian food, to me, if it's a 1 through 10, they get a 10 plus. Only because I like spices. I like hot foods. So I like seasons. I like my food very seasoned. And that's what they do there. You know, they have different types of spices and the food is a 10 plus. Um, one thing that comes to mind when I think Ethiopia is injera. Injera is a type of spongy bread. Um, it has everything in it. You know, it's made from teff. It's a seed. But in it, it has magnesium. It has iron. It has protein. It has a lot of different minerals and nutrients in it. And when it's mixed with spices and meat, it's like, it's, it's perfect. Now, it has a little bit of a bitter taste because it has high iron. But, hey, that's something that you all need, especially women. It's very good for you. Um, yeah, we had a great time, great date. And after the date, we even had a greater time. But I don't want to get into detail with that. But you can just, you know, imagine. Um, what else can I say? Um, you might hear someone or people talk about Habisha women. That in general means Ethiopian women. Habisha. So, you know, don't be like, what is, what is that? Like, what kind of people are that? You know, it's, it's Ethiopian women. So um, that's a little pointer. And also, I want to mention just for the people that don't travel outside their country, Get a passport. Travel to somewhere that you haven't been before. If you're someone that travels to Central America a lot, go to South America. You know, if you're someone that travels to South America a lot, 
Go to Africa. Go to a different continent. Go to a different country you haven't visited before. Because something that will happen is you'll keep visiting the same country and there's more than that one country. You know, there's the whole world out there. So venture off to different countries, see different people. And the good thing about Ethiopia is they're one of the few countries, I think it's Ethiopia and Russia and a few more countries, they've never been colonized by anyone. So what that means is once you go to Ethiopia, they have all their culture, their cultures intact. You know, versus other countries that were colonized by other people, they didn't. They beat the French. So their culture is intact. So they have a lot of culture in Ethiopia. So that's something very unique to see once you get there. So I hope you enjoyed the video and stay tuned to the next videos and episodes I have in Ethiopia. Peace out.